Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So today we'll be seeing um, how to work with complex conjugates. So we introduced the complex conjugate in one of the previous videos and now we'll be seeing how to work with them and a couple of their properties. Okay, so let's first have a look at some of the properties. So this is a theoretical exercise which will be sort of a derivation of some of these properties. So if z equals a plus ib where a and b are real Simplify z plus z bar, z minus z bar, and z times z bar. And remember, z bar is just another way of saying the conjugate of z. Okay, so if we're having a look at z plus z bar, that means we're looking at uh, z is a plus ib, and z bar is a minus ib. So this is z here, and this one is z bar. Okay, now we are uh, add complex numbers as if we were just collecting like terms of an algebraic expression. And so here we have a plus a, which is 2a, and we have ib minus ib, which is of course 0. Now you note that this is 2a, that's fine, but we can also recognize that this is twice the real part of z, right? So z is a plus ib, and the real part of z is a. So this is 2 times a, or we can think of it as 2 times the real part of z. So the reason we think of it like this is so we can have, in general, z plus z bar is equal to twice the real part of z. Okay, now z minus z bar. Okay, that's going to be a plus ib minus a minus ib and again we subtract complex numbers as if we were just collecting like terms of an algebraic expression and so here we have a minus a which is zero and we have ib minus minus ib which is going to be ib plus ib which is of course 2ib and once again as we had here this is twice the real of z here we have 2i times the imaginary part of z. So the imaginary part of z is b because it's being multiplied by i. So remember, the imaginary part of z is not ib, it's b because it's being multiplied by i. And so we write like that. So in general, we have z minus z bar equals 2 times i times the imaginary part of z. Okay, now let's have a look at z times z bar. So this is a plus ib multiplied by a minus ib. Okay, so you should notice this is a difference of two squares. And so it's going to be this term squared minus this term or squared. Okay, now here we have a squared minus i squared b squared, but remember we have by definition i equals the square root of minus 1, and so therefore i squared is minus 1, and so here we have a squared minus minus 1, which will be plus b squared, right, so this is a squared minus minus b squared, which is a squared plus b squared, and so we tend to call this a product or a rather a difference of two squares. So this here is a difference of two squares, but because we're dealing with complex numbers, we now change the difference to a sum of two squares. Right? So here we have a plus in between the two squares, when usually we would have a minus sign in between the two squares, because here we're dealing with i squared, which gives us this sum. Okay, and so let's put here z times z bar is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's those are three uh, simple results there. Now we'll have a look at something else. If z1 if z1 equals a1 plus ib1, 
and Z2 equals A2 plus IB2 show that Z1 plus Z2 bar, so the conjugate of this entire expression, is equal to Z1 bar plus Z2 bar. Okay, so if we have a look at Z1 plus Z2 bar, that's A1 plus IB1 plus A2 plus IB2. And we're taking the conjugate of all that. Okay, so here we collect the like terms and we have A1 plus A2. And then we can factor out an I between these two terms here. And we get I times B1 plus B2. And don't forget we take the conjugate of that. Right, so now we have a real part and an imaginary part. And so we can take the conjugate and that just changes the sign. So this is A1 plus A2 minus I into B1 plus B2. Okay, now let's distribute the minus I through this bracket here. So we have A1 plus A2. This will be minus IB1. This will be minus IB2. And let's collect the A1s and B1s and A2s and B2s separately. So we have A1 minus IB1. That's one part here. Plus A2 minus IB2. Now here you should recognize this as the conjugate of Z1. So we can write this as Z1 bar. And here you should recognize this as the conjugate of Z2. So that is Z2 bar. And so therefore, Z1 plus Z2 all bar is equal to Z1 bar plus Z2 bar. And in fact, we can generalize this statement. So in general, we have that the sum of n complex numbers, if we take the conjugate of this sum, that is in fact equal to the sum of their individual conjugates. Right, and you can prove this quite easily by mathematical induction. Okay, so, and uh, I suggest you try that as well. Let's um, have a look at uh, a similar case. So here we have the conjugate of a product, and we need to show that it's equal to the product of the conjugate. So let's have a look at Z1, Z2 bar. That is A1 plus B or IB1 times A2 plus IB2. And we are taking the conjugate there. All right. Now this is just expanding, and we get A1 times A2 plus I into A1 B2 plus I times A2 B1. Here we're going to have I squared B1 B2, but remember I squared is minus 1, and so we have minus B1 B2, and so we can collect the real and imaginary parts here. And we get A1, A2, minus B1, B2, plus I, times A1, B2, plus A2, B1. Oh, that's a 1 there. Oh, and of course we're taking the conjugates of these. Shouldn't forget about that. Okay, and when we take the conjugates, so we have real part here, we have imaginary part here. And so now we can just take the conjugate by swapping this sign. So we get minus I A1 B2 plus A2 B1. Right? And that's what Z1 Z2 bar is equal to. Now let's work out what Z1 bar times Z2 bar is equal to. Right? So that's... Now Z1 bar is... A1 minus IB1, and Z2 is, or Z2 bar is A2 minus IB2. Alright, we just expand as normal. So A1 times A2, 
minus A1IB2, so we can write I out the front, A1B2. Here we have minus A2IB1, so minus, we can write the I out the front again, A2B1. And here we're going to have minus IB1 times minus IB2. So the two minuses will cancel to give a plus, but we're still left with the I squared. And that I squared, again, is minus 1, and so we have minus B1, B2. Alright, if we collect like terms, or rather, it's more correct to say collect the real and imaginary parts, we're left with this. minus i outside of a1, b2, plus a2, b1. But you should recognize this as what we just proved up here as z1, z2 bar. Right? And so therefore, we can say that z1, z2 bar is equal to z1 bar times z2 bar. And as with the sums, we can generalize this in general. We have z1 times z2 up to zn, taking the conjugate is equal to the product of the individual conjugates, not plus, multiplied by z2 bar up to z n bar. And again, I encourage you to try and prove this to yourself by mathematical induction, because when you prove something to yourself, you're more likely to remember it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video.